So what we'll do is in this short video, we will explore the delta of an at the money option. So we'll do it, let's say both for an at the money call and an at the money put. What we'll assume is both of these options are European options and they are both on a stock, which is a non-dividend paying stock. So the reason why we are doing this is because the delta of this kind of an option figures repeatedly when you tackle questions which basically compute the VAR of an, of an options position and that can be a call option or a put option. It can be a long position, it can be a short position and you are doing it using the delta normal method because that method requires you to use the delta of this option. Okay, so what we begin with first is the value of the delta of the option. Let's say it's the delta of a call option from the Black-Scholes model and this number we know is ND1. Okay, so since I'm assuming here that it's a non-dividend paying stock, which is the underlying, so I'll not be making any adjustments to this calculation to incorporate dividends. So let's begin with this. Now let's expand this over. So let's put in the value of the D1. So D1 would be its N of ln of the current stock price which is st i'm assuming that i am standing at time t and the expiry of the option is at capital t let's say the time left between these two times is tau for example okay so we have ln of st over k plus we have r plus sigma square by 2 times tau which is the residual time to maturity and that divided by sigma root tau okay so this is what i am computing the area to the left of n is the cdf of the standard normal distribution so if i talk about an add the money option and at this point, let me qualify that at the money here means at the money spot, which means that the current stock price ST is equal to the strike price of the option. So what do I have? When I put this into this equation, the first term goes away because it's the log of one, which we know is zero. And we are left with this, ex this expression, which tells us that the delta of a call is the area in or under the standard normal distribution to the left of r plus sigma square by 2 times tau that divided by sigma root tau okay so that's what we arrive at now the first thing which we see here is that we know the r is positive that's what at least textbooks assume textbooks on financial engineering and we know that sigma is positive. So that's, there is no sort of problem in assuming that. So sigma we know is positive. So when you take a look at what goes inside this bracket, it's a term which will be positive. And if you are really going with this rule of thumb that the delta of the at the money call is 0.5 and delta of at the money put is minus 0.5, then that's not really what this expression is telling us. So the first things first, we should qualify that rule, which we keep in our mind to be saying that the delta of an at the money call option, keep in mind is approximately 0.5. Don't take it as exactly 0.5. What we are seeing here is it's, we haven't yet gone to that point where it's close to 0.5 or not, but it, the first thing which we know here is it's not exactly 0.5. That's, that's what we know, okay? Because for 0.5, I need to have the term in the bracket to be zero. Why? Because I know that in a standard normal distribution, the area to the left of zero is 0.5 and the area to the right of zero is 0.5 because the mean of this standard normal variable is zero, okay? So that's the first observation. Now, let's take a look at what this delta has to do or this number in the square bracket has to do to be close to 0.5. That means when will our approximation or our assumption be indeed true? So we already know the R and the sigma are positive. So they cannot net to zero. So R plus sigma square by two cannot be zero. The only way this expression in the square bracket can approach zero 
is when this tau approaches zero. That means the option becomes progressively near or reaches near its expiry. Now, is that correct? Let that, that's our next question. That means if I am, let's say, holding a call option, which is, let's say, expiring just now, or maybe the next second, the next instant, will its delta be 0.5? So that's, that's the question which we are asking. If we put a very, very tiny number into this tau, well, indeed, we get a number which is very close to zero. And indeed, the Black-Scholes will tell us, yes, the delta of this option is 0.5. But if you were to take a look at what happens exactly at expiry, then we know that the payoff of a call option looks something like this. The payoff of a put option looks something like this, right? Where this kink appears at K. So this is at K, this is at K, okay? So if I were to compute the delta, which we know is the sensitivity of the price of this call option, against the spot. I'm using partial derivatives here because C can be, let's say, affected by other variables as well. But since I am at maturity, the only variable C is affected by is S. So let's drop the partial derivatives, make it a proper derivative, okay? So when you take a derivative of C with respect to S, and that is exactly at expiry, you would get a zero when you evaluate it for any of the spots in this region, and you would get a one when you evaluate it for any of the spots in this region. Similarly, any of the spots in this region give you a minus one for a put and zero for any spot in this region. When you talk about this point, precisely this point, at the point when s is equal to k, the function that we have drawn here is not even differentiable. Okay, so there is no unique tangent which you have at this point. It's not even a differentiable function. So delta would not be even defined at this point. So if delta is not even defined, we'll not be really saying that whether it's 0.5 or not. It's not even defined. Okay, so this rule of thumb that we kept in mind that delta of this at the money call approaches 0.5 holds for the residual time to maturity approaching zero is again something which we have to kind of take with a pinch of salt, okay? This will strictly hold when you are not really, you know, in the limiting context of zero. You are still, let's say, you know, a month away or let's say a week away from maturity, okay? So this is what our option pricing formula took us to. Now let's take one more thing. Let's do one more thing and that is Given the value of delta that we have in front of us, so let's say delta call I know is n and, and I write it as let's say ln of s by k plus r plus sigma square by 2 tau, that divided by sigma root tau, okay? Now, with this in front of us, can we qualify our definition of add the money a bit to make that 0.5 rule of thumb which we carry in our heads a bit more accurate. So we can do something and that is let's move away from this definition of what we call add the money spot which, def which we defined as a case where the current stock price is equal to the strike price to actually let's move to another case which we call add the money forward, okay? So at the money forward would be a case where, let's say the current forward price of this stock, let's say estimated at time T, which is the current time, and for delivery at time capital T, let that be equal to K, okay? And if this is indeed a stock which does not pay you any dividends, then we know this basically amounts to, it tells me that ST e to the power R T minus T, which I know is tau, should be equal to K. Okay, so what does it tell me? It tells me st over k times e to the power r tau is equal to 1, which means take a log, you get log of st over k plus r tau is 0. So come back to the formula for delta. It means this term combined with r times tau gives me a 0. What are we left with then? We are left with this expression which tells us that for an option which is at the money forward, the delta would be the area to the left of 
sigma square by 2 tau that divided by sigma root tau okay so that means its area to the left of sigma root tau by 2 so this number which would be closer to 0.5 as compared to what it would have been for an at the money spot option okay now we can go a step further we can actually since we've reached here we can actually go one more step ahead and try and get a very sort of rough or very you know, close enough approximation for the delta of a call in the vicinity of d1 equal to 0 and we can very easily do it using our high school calculus so the approximate delta of this call would be the delta evaluated at 0 which is I know is n 0 plus the derivative of this function basically what I'm doing is I have a function of x and I'm trying to find the approximate value of this function in the vicinity of a point 0 fx here basically you know if I, if I were to connect this with what I am doing f here is the normal cdf normal distribution cdf and x here is d1 that's that's as simple as that okay so I can do it as function evaluated at 0 which is this plus the derivative of this function the first derivative I mean again evaluated at 0 that means n prime evaluated at 0 that times the distance between the point 0 and the point at which you want to evaluate this function and that distance is sigma root tau by 2 okay so what is n dash 0 it's basically the pdf CDF's derivative remember is the PDF so this will be the PDF of the standard normal distribution evaluated at 0 which is 1 over root 2 pi okay so this number is approximately close to 0.4 which tells me that delta of a call option is approximately and here it's an at the money forward call is approximately n of 0 I know is half plus it will be point 4 which is this guy divided by 2 which is this guy so 0 0.2 times sigma root tau okay so what does it tell us it tells us that if I have an add the money forward option whose volatility is not that big whose residual time to maturity is not that big then I am very well you know I am quite okay making this approximation that the delta of this call is 0 0.5 okay now this was about sigma and tau being very small okay if sigma is huge let's say sigma is very very huge let's say sigma goes to infinity or let's say even tau is very huge it's a very very long dated option that means tau also let's say goes to infinity then what happens to this delta of an add the money option then our 0.5 goes out of the window what happens is that the call option it increases in value as sigma goes up because we know the vega of this option is positive so when sigma goes up this call gains in value but the value of the call is limited from above by an upper bound and that is the spot price prevailing as of today so even if it goes up it hits this upper bound and when it hits this upper bound if you were to take a derivative of this to compute your delta of the call then delta of the call would therefore approach 1 okay similarly if you were to take a put for example if this happens for a put then the value of the put would let's say go up to the present value of the strike so that's the that's the upper bound of a European put option and when you take a derivative with respect to stock price then you are reaching basically 0 okay so these are nowhere close to what we assume the values of 0.5 and minus 0.5 okay so when when we say that the delta of a call option is approximately 0.5 and that of a put is approximately point minus 0.5 please bear in mind that there are a, there are loads of assumptions going behind the scenes for making those values happen okay now coming back to the frm exam when you deal with questions which are to do with computation of var using delta normal method for long or short positions of let's say calls or puts well for the from the exam perspective and in this exam context you are fine to go ahead with this assumption of 0.5 you needn't at that point in time plug in values and compute the accurate delta 
the solution itself of those questions assumes that you can very well go ahead and take the value of 0.5 or minus 0.5 okay so this aim of this short video was to basically use a certain set of results which we already know from the quant section and from the valuation and risk model section to make us more aware of this rule of thumb of what the delta is of an anthemony option